welcome back to Out Your Shell. This is part two of what I've learned living in Poland. It's been a couple of months now and I have enjoyed myself. The very first video being the biggest one on this channel, 3K views, which to me, a newbie to this whole social media. So thank you to anyone who's become a tortoise due to that video. Anyone else who's newly watching this, like and subscribe and we'll see. So I've been in Poland now for three months and genuinely enjoyed it. Being able to expand out of this town that I'm currently residing in and having locals accept and happily welcome me into the community from going to man-made beaches, going to barbecues, being invited to people's homes. It's been a very welcoming, humbling, down-to-earth experience I've enjoyed. Before we continue to some of the top points I've realized over the extra couple of months of being here, I'd like to read out a couple of comments that you tortoises have put on the last channel and I appreciate any interaction. This is a new growing channel with a bigger goal in mind. So one of them is Mr. Ruch. Hello, your observations are right. We, the Poles, don't open themselves as Western people, but the reason is easy. We don't want to be taken as too much curious or even inquisitive. I think it's good behavior, but if we want to know, we definitely know. Thank you for that comment there. Okay, Paul says, hey mate, hats off for you learning Polish. I really haven't, my Polish is terrible. Uh, as it's one of the most difficult languages to learn, I've, I've never been fine for jaywalking in Krakow mind you with the way the traffic moves I wouldn't like chances of getting across safely would you happen to be in Jaroslav or Premizel? apologies I'm gonna pronounce it wrong I believe we chatted privately Paul uh, about the uh, vodka refinery um, maybe visit one day one day Andre says am I am I the only one who hears outdated school systems and think that is a big plus for Poland I guess if you compared the big mass news in America now the whole LGBT plus alphabet wanting to indoctrinate children put it in a classroom yes maybe Poland is very very traditional but maybe maybe in some some ways it's a good thing one more carol good job keep it up bro thank you carol anyone that comments on this remember everything is opinion based i can definitely 100 percent be wrong about some things because of my experiences in the end we're right or wrong let me tell you some extra points i've learned since being in poland three months now the very first point i want to make which is a contradictive one so on a sunday here in poland all the shops close now i've been talking to a couple of the younger people the people that work on the floor stocking shelves and all that and they hate this they hate this sunday closure because it means that on the other days they are forced to work extra hours to make up for that sunday so i was told that on a friday people are working 13 14 hours because they've got to catch up to that sunday miss out on the other hand for myself being very fortunate to have a great couple of families around me that are extremely welcoming so for myself and Isa, every sunday is the day that we go to babcha anya dziękuję babcha in which they'll have a nice meal it's a day of everyone coming together and have some food together so with this sunday being a church religious led the government enforcing it a few years ago um yeah contradictive the next point i'm going to compare to a lot of traditional thoughts of immigrants in the uk the idea of coming taking our jobs this is something i heard a lot back in the uk now living here now talking to people that are leaving school education and not even reached 30 yet just finishing the gym and one lad who loves to come up say hello try and have a conversation don't call your brat if you ever watch this um, and he works in Norway. He has to go to Norway for one, two months and then come home for a week, be around his family, his kids, then go back to Norway. This is the reason the economy here, the income, the amount of work it takes for you to survive here for an average person, not someone that owns a business, anything like that, for an average being is impossible. Not just only Norway, Netherlands, the UK, 
um, Polish men seem to shamefully have to go and earn proper money in order to come home and live a normal life, not a special life. Nothing that's amazing or beyond anyone else. But maybe the next time there's a little bit of judgment of someone or this traditional stupid mindset of they're coming and taking our jobs. If you was in a position where you were forced to live with many other people in an apartment, your living room, you don't even have set beds by the way, you have sofas that are pulled out into beds in every room. If you were living in this situation, you knew that you couldn't make it any better in your country. Would you move to a more developed, better economy in order to use that currency to provide back home? I'm pretty sure you would, so. The next point I wanted to make, which is a really, really nice one for me, is that the food here isn't filled with antibiotics. You get more per purchase, you get a higher quality than the UK. I'm not a fan of McDonald's, I think it's a massive burden on the world, but when I did go, the chicken nuggets, completely different taste, tasted amazing, the chicken burgers, amazing, I don't know why this is a point. And it's the same with every food, if you buy raw chicken in a shop, you're getting more for your money as a pound value. The only downfall to this is that, and I totally understand, it's the cheapest, easiest to produce. Potatoes and bread is a massive thing here. For someone like myself that is trying to diet, trying to get myself ready for Cambodia next year, um, it's a burden. So come on guys, get that rice. Cool check zebra, silish. The last point I wanna make, something I've realized in Poland when I'm sitting around with friends, families, we're having a barbecue, we're out in town, I'm meeting someone new in a gym. And I understand this is a cultural thing, I understand, and I saw in the comments of the last one, is that Polish people don't like small talk. There's no need for a polite talk, a welcome, a small talk, how are you, blah, blah. But beyond that is why do you have to interrupt? I'll be talking to one of these friends and she'll be talking English so I'm able to have a little bit of a conversation and then suddenly someone would interrupt and then all focus is taken away which means you cannot actually have a conversation. I get it's a cultural thing, I get it's a hierarchy of respect with your age and so on but as an English person that doesn't get to use English very much here where I am the interruption is like, like, come on, please, plosha, plosha, shush. Otherwise, guys, thank you for checking in. I am enjoying Poland. I'm enjoying the people. Next month, I'll be teaching in a school here, which I'm looking forward to. It's a big step for me. It's new. Um, yeah, so make sure you've liked and subscribed. We've only got a few more months till we land in Vietnam, then Cambodia. So if you want to see a travel vlog, the represents the poorest of the community, not the touristy. We're gonna to be taking our time, truly looking around, looking at the details of life. That's what I want my life to be. Work with the local aid groups, go do something good, productive, something for those that need it. Throwing away that ego, that vanity, that materialistic lifestyle. Otherwise, much love guys, come out your shell. See you in part three maybe. Mm.